Good morning, Heartbeat Andrea. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Heartbeat on Gwen. It is God Never Fails Friday. Yes, yes, yes. Love it, love it, love it. It is God Never Fails Friday. Happy Friday, Heartbeat Aaliyah, Heartbeat Alicia, Heartbeat Veronica, Heartbeat on Gwen, Heartbeat Elaine. It is God Never Fails Friday. I love it. I love it. I love it. That just sets the tone for today. We win. That is awesome, awesome, awesome. How are you guys doing this morning? We working the fruit. Are we having a great week with working the fruit? Hello there, Heartbeat Juanita. Good morning, Heartbeat Motley. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So we're going to jump right in here, give people a couple more seconds to get on, and then we're going to jump right in. It's God Never Fails Friday. I am wonderful. Got gas at Costco this morning for two seventy one. No limit. Did not have to wait in line. I love it. Good morning, Heartbeat. Pudding Pop. Great week, says Heartbeat Juanita. The fruit works. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started this morning. And so we know that we've been working on the fruit of the spirit all this week. And we've learned that once we conquer the love walk, that love gives us access to joy and to peace and to uh, faithfulness and to meekness. And it just opens the door for us to um, experience God in its fullest. And so we want to close out this week with fruit number nine, self-control or temperance. And I know like yesterday when I said we were going to be going over self-control, it was so funny. People were like, oh my goodness. But let me just say this. We all have self-control because God gave it to us. And so let's just look at what um, self-control or temperance, whichever word you choose to use, is the ability to control yourself. It is the ability to control yourself. And I would have to say that controlling your mouth is probably the biggest challenge. The mouth is very powerful. You speak with it. You eat with your mouth, which dictates your future. Good morning, heartbeat, Valerie. And so in learning self-control, we've got to learn to say what God said, not what we say. We've got to understand that blessing and curses do not come out of the same mouth. And so when you realize that you're about to say something that goes against what the word says, then you know you can't say it. Remember the acronym of think before you speak. You know, is it true? If it is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it needed? And is it kind? Good morning, Heartbeat. Did I say hello, hello to you yet? Good morning, Heartbeat, Yolanda. Um, is it kind? And so is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Um, is it needed? And is it kind? And so if you can't say yes to all five of those things, then you should not say it. And so we've got to learn with um, having control over our mouths to speak life and understand that you don't have to say everything that comes to your mind. You don't have to participate in every conversation that you're invited to. You just do not have to do those things. Good morning, Heartbeat Carolyn. And so when we realize that it's, it's, it's all in renewing our minds minds. It's all in, you know, getting the word daily. It's all in um, crucifying the flesh as heartbeat Aaliyah likes to say um, daily. That's what you have to do. You have to renew your mind every day, renewing our mind and being um, the Christian that God called us to be. That is a daily process. You never get that um, down pack. We're doing that every day. Every day we're learning to be better. And I always tell people, you know, I don't like to see people um, competing, at least not healthy, uh, unhealthy competition. But my thing is this, I only compete against myself. 
I want to be a better Regina than I was on yesterday. And so, like I'm saying with this self-control, how do you do that? I'm renewing my mind daily. Every day I'm medicating on the word of God so that I can be better than I am the day I was the day before. And so in having self-control, we've got to learn how to um, watch, you know, what we say out of our mouths. And here's the most important thing about this self-control thing. You notice I said self-control, which means you do not control other people. Somebody say it with me. You do not control other people. Say it with me. I do not control other people. So you need to exercise self-control, self-control, temperance for yourself. Nobody else belongs to you. You cannot dictate somebody else's life. You cannot tell somebody else what to do. If you give somebody advice or if somebody allows you to give them advice, they're accepting your advice. They are not giving you permission to run their lives. Say, I do not control other people. I control myself. Somebody say, amen. Let the church say, amen. Temperance, learning to control myself. So what's the other thing? So our mouth has power. Our mouth is what we speak from. And so we've got to remember that we use the acronym THINK before we speak. And then the other thing is control what I put in my mouth. Somebody said, Pastor G, no, you didn't go there. But yes, I did go there. Control what you put in your mouth. Your body is the temple of God. Your body, I'm saying it again so that the people in the balcony can hear me. Your body is the temple of God. And so you have got to take care of your body. You You've got to watch how much salt, how much sugar you put in your body. I guess about maybe um, a year and a half ago, we had this um, thing at my church and we were trying to, you know, looking at wellness and how to take care of our bodies. And I told just a small segment on um, sugar and you would be amazed at how much sugar we eat, like how much sugar is in one pack of ketchup. And when you look at it, so what I did was I used, I used a measuring cup and I literally poured sugar in a measuring cup so that people could see just how much sugar is in one bowl of cereal. You know, the serving that they say that we should have. Now, how many of us know nobody eats the serving um, of cereal that you're supposed to have? And so the sugar was a whole lot. What am I saying to you? You've got to learn how to exercise control with what you put in your mouth. I'm going to say it again. You've got to learn how to exercise control with what you put in your mouth. Like I said, the mouth is very powerful and it is the thing that we have to learn how to control. We've got to learn to control what comes out of our mouths and we've got to learn to control what we put in our mouths. And so here it is. The word of God ought to be coming out of your mouth and the word of God is what you should be putting in your mouth. When you put the word of God in your mouth. See, it does something with your mind. It, it regulates your mind because your mind is being renewed. And so you no longer want to um, continue to live in and act out in gluttony. What is gluttony? Eating more than you should eat. You've got to learn self-control. You've got to learn when to push back from the table. You don't have to eat that whole sub sandwich. You don't have to eat two servings of anything. You don't have to drink three sodas. You don't have to do those things. This is what it means by exercising self-control. Knowing that our bodies belong to God, how are we going to be able to go out in this world, tell other people about Jesus if we're sick? I'm going to say that again. How are you going to stand and talk to other people about how good God is if you're sick? And so you've got to learn to exercise control. The other thing with this control thing, you've got to know when you need to seek assistance. Control your, you know, sometimes we want to be um, everything and God has not equipped us to do that. God says he gives us grace for this day, that his grace is sufficient, but we've got to learn how to, when we need to reach out to others. I know this is a little bit of awful control, but it's for somebody out there. When you need help, you've got to admit that I need help. Don't let pride take you over. Don't you all know what the word says? 
when we're a prideful person, what's going to happen? It's going to be a hard fall. And so in taking care of our bodies, make sure that if you know that you need to go to the doctor, go to the doctor. If you know you need to sit and talk to somebody, talk to somebody, get the help that you need. Don't let your emotions get out of control. I'm going to say it again. That's another thing that we need to learn how to control. Control your emotions. Don't let your emotions control you. What happens when we let the, our emotions control us, we end up looking like a fool. And we always want to throw stuff on the devil. The devil has me looking like a fool. No, sometimes we can't blame it on the devil. Sometimes it's just you. It's your emotions are out of control. Somebody say my emotions are not out of control. This is what it looks like when your emotions are out of control. It is you getting in a baggage. The bag is zipped up and the bag is now carrying you instead of you carrying the bag. That's what it looks like when your emotions are out of control. And so we've got to learn to get our emotions under control. How do I do that? The answer is the same. The word of God. When I begin to eat on the word of God, each and every day, that's when my emotions get under control. You've got to learn to tell your emotions, I'm in charge. Practice it with me. I'm in charge. Practice it with me. I'm in charge. Because when our emotions are out of control, we are out of control. What happens when our emotions are out of control? It causes um, hardships and relationships. It causes people to dis distance themselves from you. And what is the, what's happening with that? Now you're isolated. And now, you know, the grandmas used to always say when you're isolated, everything's going on in your mind. And that is then when the um, enemy has its place with you because an idle mind is the enemy's workshop. So we've got to learn how to not only control our mouths, we've got to learn how to control our emotions, which means what? I've got to learn how to control my thoughts. I'm thinking on whatever I'm putting in. I'm thinking on whatever I'm watching. I'm thinking on whatever I'm listening to. And so you've got to learn how to listen to the word of God. You've got, you know, you got to learn how to have a filter. When I've had too much of that, turn it off. When you notice the things I control, here's an here's a example. I remember when I used to watch, um, what was it? Basketball Wives. And I remember one time Tammy said something, um, that right there will get you popped. And I remember... Um, talking with somebody and they said something crazy. And I said, you know, that comment right there will get you popped. And immediately I said, what in the world? I don't talk like that. But what was happening? It was something that I heard that I thought was funny. It was like, mm, she got her in check. But what happened? It was still in there. And so when somebody said something that I didn't like, that's what came out. The word of God didn't come out. Temperance didn't come out. Self-control didn't come out. I didn't use the right word. So I didn't use the acronym of think. Something else came out. Why? Because that was what I had watched. That was what I had heard. It had gotten in my mind. It had gotten in my heart and it came right out my mouth. So do you see the importance of getting control of what you see, what you hear, because you're going to start thinking it and it's then going to come out of your mouth. We must learn how to exercise control with our mouths, what we put in it, what comes out of it. We've got to learn how to control our emotions because what happens? Our emotions start to dictate our future because we're acting out of control. Only children act out of control. You are no longer a child. The only child that you are is a child of God. And children of God do not out out of control. We are examples. We show love. We show peace. We show joy. We show faithfulness. We show meekness. This is who we are. We show goodness. We show kindness. And most importantly, we show self-control. We exercise temperance. Let the church say amen that is what the children of God do and so that is your daily dosage for today I hope that this week has been great for you I hope that this week has caused you to look at yourself to examine yourself remember I started out the week saying that by this time um, during the year we've gone and we've had our checkups so this was a spiritual checkup so I hope that once you have looked at yourself you reviewed all nine fruit that if it was something that you 
you needed to work on, that you are working on it, please do not beat yourself up. God is love. He does not come to beat us up, but he comes, delivers his word so that we can change and be more like him. Remember, he said we are made in his image, which means what? It's possible to be like God. It's possible to act like God. It's possible excuse me, it's possible to exhibit the fruit of God. Amen. So you can do it. Don't let the voices of the world tell you that you cannot do it. You can do it. You can walk in love. You can walk in peace. You can walk in joy. You can walk in faithfulness and goodness. You can do it. You can exercise self-control. I love you guys a bunch. Hey, don't forget, share this so that someone else can get free. If you have not subscribed, to the YouTube channel already, please do so. On the YouTube channel, you can watch all of these over again and as many times as you need to get free. Come on, you know how we do it, how we close out. Say, God wants me whole and I'm getting whole by the minute. I love you guys a bunch. Make sure you have a fantastic weekend. Make sure you exhibit God. Make sure you walk in the fruit because you are changing daily. Don't go back. Keep moving forward. And I will see you guys on Monday morning at 7.30 a.m. Have a great weekend.